Okay, Scott, your box has arrived. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things unpacked and um, we're gonna have a look. Give me one moment, I'm just gonna cut into it off camera. look at where we are and what we've got <clears throat> all right so you have a nineteen eighty three six three oh nine seven oh four nine this is uh, post sewer production so this should have a long text at the bottom which it does and that reads 6309704T movement and dial Japan cased Hong Kong. So, a Hong Kong watch, which is cool. This is the, the later, later, you know, variations. They moved production. Um, and you can tell that it doesn't have Japan on the back of the case. It just says water resist, A, and then a SUA. And so in 83, that was close to the end of the run for the 6309. And it's a cool watch. Okay, so well-worn, of course. Um, it's got some blue hazing here in the, in the insert. You can see a slight blue tint underneath the... Um, so it's sort of a layered effect where you get black on the top and then the, where it's worn you see this blue uh, shining in. Um, definitely need a crystal. Looks like your hands are in good shape. Got a little bit of sinking in the loom but nothing too bad here on your hour hand. Um, you got a click ball that seems to be in place. Which is good. Yep, there it is. Overall, you know, it's a worn watch. Um, let's check your crown and stem, so that turns down nicely. Okay, just go through all the operations here. Clicks over, that's good, and now that we're down in the bottom half, we can just run through and make sure everything's good to go. English-Spanish wheel. job okay um, overall you know it's a it's a, a watch that has been on the wrist for sure you got some I think some spring bars that are a little too long here we're gonna get you some some properly length spring bars take these take these off they're not quite quite right so we'll get those replaced with some good uh, Seiko specific you know big end bars. Um, yeah, I don't see anything too major. It's hard to see the dial, you know, up close here. It's, it doesn't look like there's any any issues with your dial. Um, your hands need a little clean, but otherwise it looks okay. Not a lot of uh, water intrusion uh, look here. You've got, you know, a little bit on your on your center, on your sweep second there, but not bad. Your pips in good shape. Seems to be intact. All right, let's go ahead and get the movement opened up. Let's have a look inside and see what we've got. I'll be right. Okay, I was able to get your case back loosened up. I haven't had it off yet, but we're gonna 
take a look together here and see what's underneath. I'm expecting a movement. Oh yes, okay. Um, certainly dusty in here, but nothing indicating service. All right, very clean, which is nice. Yeah, that's good to see. It looks like you've got some power in your mainspring already, but not very much action out of your movement. Seems a bit tight. All right. Hmm. Okay. Oh man, you've got some arbor wear, which is not unexpected. All right, let's go ahead and get it on the time grapher, and we're gonna have a quick look to see what the performance is like. Okay, well, uh, we are in <laughs> not the best of states here. This is um, this is a movement that's trying to find its way, and it, it's it's a little weak, and so weak in fact that my detector can't pick it up. So um, I'm gonna try and put your watch in a different spot. Maybe that'll help, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's struggling. It's struggling to move, and uh, I don't even know if we're going to get much signal, so let's see. It has to be able to lock into a, um, a sort of consistent pulse from the, from the balance, and it's not getting there. Um, okay, well, um, we know we need service. <laughs> When, when I can't detect anything, um, it means it's it's pretty darn weak. So, um, yeah, okay. So we're not we're not getting much. We'll be back. Let's get back to bench. Okay, Scott. Well, it definitely has its needs. I mean, you know, in principle, the watch is operating. You know, Seikos are pretty darn tough. They can they can operate um, under a lot of very poor um, sort of movement conditions where there's no lubrication or there's you know binding and all that kind of stuff they still seem to seem to still tick um but this one certainly um you know is not giving me a measurable signal in the movement of the of the balance and so you know it, it just it needs service um yeah you can see your balance is barely even ticking over here this is swinging at about 10 degrees of amplitude, which is enough to move the move the second hand. It's a move, you know, it's basically engaging the um, the pallet fork to the escape wheel, but it's uh, it's not doing anything. Okay, well, you definitely are in need of service, um, and we're gonna get you there. It's gonna, it's hopefully will only just be a matter of, you know, of lubrication, etc. but you never know. There could be demons lurking lurking beneath, um, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get them exercised and make sure that everything is right uh, for it to come home. All right, well, um, I will be in touch. I'll send you this video and we can move forward from there. All right, thanks so much, Scott. Thanks for watching.